Wow, these North Georgia candy roasters have grown so fast just in seven days. Today, we are going to plant these North Georgia candy roasters in the ground. They are more than ready. They're just now starting to put on their first set of true leaves. The North Georgia candy roaster is a Appalachia heirloom winter squash that was bred back in the late 1800s by the Cherokee Nation. The North Georgia candy roasters needs plenty of room to grow because it vines out and the vines can get up anywhere 10 feet or more in length. So I'm going to be planting them approximately three feet apart. This is compost from my own hot compost pile that is finished now and it has a pH of seven. I want the pH of the soil to be 6.5 so I'm going to be adding a little bit of peat moss with it to bring down the pH sum. Because the pH of my soil here has been running a little bit on the high side, anywhere from 7 to 7.2. The pH of my compost is about 7. I'm going to mix together 5 gallons of my own compost and 5 gallons of peat moss. This is the peat moss. And I'm going to put some water in it first. Peat moss has a tendency to repel water at the beginning, but after a few minutes, it begins to absorb it. Now I'm adding my own compost. This is my Kelway pH meter. This is the conditioning film. And you just take the conditioning film and just rub it over the probe just a couple times. And you don't touch the probe with your hand because of the oils can mess it up. My pH is a little bit too low now. So I'm going to add a little bit of native soil with this mixture to bring it up just slightly. So on my proportions, I needed less than five gallons of peat moss to five gallons of compost. But that just goes to show you, if you need to get your pH down, peat moss will do it. I'm adding about a half a five gallon bucket of my own native soil. Okay, let's try that again. I've got the native soil mixed together in it. It's about 6.2. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so what I just learned in using my compost at a pH around 7, and when I want to lower it to about 6.5, all I have to do is use about 5 gallons of compost and 2.5 and gallons of peat moss. Okay, so now I'm ready to get the candy roasters in the ground. I'm going to be using as a fertilizer the Espoma Organic plant tone. I'm going to be putting a couple tablespoons per plant. I'm going to mix it with the soil. And this organic Espoma Biotone plant starter. Getting ready to plant my first candy roaster. I have the water turned on so I can see where the water is dripping out right here. So this is one, two, three feet right here on the first plant. I'm going to get a handful of my compost, peat, and native soil mixed together, put it right here, a nice portion of it, of where we're going to be planting the plant. With that, I'm going to be putting some plant food down, a couple tablespoons, mix it in the soil. This is slow release, so it'll take time for it to break down by the micros in the soil and be available. This is the plant food. It works a little bit faster, will not burn the roots. So I'm going to put it right here, about a tablespoon. Mix it in the soil a little bit. And then plant my candy roaster. and just backspace it right here on top with my native soil. I'm gonna do another one. 
I'm going down three feet. I see my water here where it's been dripping already from the drip line, the drip tape. Put my soil down. Put about two tablespoons of plant food. This is uh, 533 MPK. About a tablespoon of that plant start. Here's the beautiful candy roaster that's starting to form its first true leaves. Nice root system on the soil block. And then backspace it with my native soil. I'm going to do this all the way down and I'll bring you back. It's another day and I finished transplanting all of the candy roasters. I had to get a floating road cover in these hoops to cover them up because the heat here in Florida was just so intense. They were beginning to stress quite severely in the heat. And so the, the road cover definitely protected them and helped them to gain some strength while they're getting adapted to their new area. I got them planted two feet apart. Candy roasters require a lot of space to grow. Next will be the care and the maintenance for these candy roasters as they grow. I am back to give you an update on the North Georgia candy roasters. Currently, my candy roasters are covered with a shea cloth. But as soon as I cover them with this 40% shea cloth, they begin to grow and thrive. And I'm going to take the shea cloth off to show you how good they look. I have quite a few candy roasters planted, so as you can see, my row is quite long. I have them supported with these simple garden hoops and the shade cloth is supported by these garden clips. Here they are. They are looking great. I'm going to take you in for a closer look. I have my very first bloom. You can see the candy roaster growing here at the back. It's a female but I don't have any male flowers to pollinate this female. And as you can see, the leaves are huge. Look how big this leaf right here is. It's so big. I'm back to give you an update on the North Georgia candy roasters. I have lots of blooms and I have some fruit already forming. Here's a young one that's well on its way. It will continue to grow and get much larger than this. Okay, so it's time to give the candy roasters some maintenance. I noticed a little bit of powdery mildew coming on, which is very common among squashes and pumpkins and watermelons and cucumbers and such as that. So we're going to be using a proven effective natural method today with baking soda and water. I'm going to use one tablespoon of baking soda to every one gallon of water. This is a two gallon sprayer. So that's my two tablespoons of baking soda. And from there, make sure you shake it up really good before you use it. It's important to get up underneath the leaves and down on the stems real good. And you just do this all over. I'm back to give you an update on the North Georgia Candy Roasters. 
Now this crop is a 100 day seed to maturity crop. Mine have been growing for about 88 days. However, some of the vines are dying back and some of the candy roasters definitely look like they're ready to harvest. So I'm going to be harvesting at least some of them today. So let's get started. My first one here is a really nice big one. We want to be able to leave as much stem on the candy roaster as possible. So I'm gonna cut it up here close to the lateral vine. It's big. This candy roaster is big. Some are bigger than others. Here's my second one. Now on this one right here, the, actually the vine is shriveled up. So I'm definitely going to take this one here. Does it, well I just barely touched it and it separated from the vine. How about that? Here's the second one. Here's my third one. Here is some of my harvest on the North Georgia candy roasters. Now to cure them, all you have to do is set them in a dry, sunny location for about 10 days. Then after that, put them in a cool, dark area until you get ready to use them. If you have found value in this video, please take a moment to subscribe if you have not done so already. Giving a thumbs up and leaving a comment helps a lot as well. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.